All right, so now let's take a look at the analog engine. Now I'm going to start from scratch here, so I'm going to click on this drop down menu and choose a new preset. And now when I play on my keyboard, you can hear this very basic sine wave tone. The engine selected here in this default preset is Wavetable, so I'm going to click here and switch back to analog. All right, one thing you'll notice is that this tune and unison section remains the same in analog, Wavetable, as well as sample. In the harmonic engine, you get the tune section, but you don't get the unison section. All right, so let's talk about what this tune section is. It's fairly simple. Every synth will have a feature like this. You want to adjust the chorus tuning. So right now we're hearing this um, first oscillator, which is set to a sawtooth shape. If I change the tuning here, even though I'm playing the same note, it goes higher or lower. That's set in semitones. I can double click to reset that back to default. There's also a fine tune control for adjusting the same parameter, but in sense. There's a very interesting drift parameter here. So this adds randomness to the pitch of each voice. So you notice that as I was repeating the same note again and again, you can hear how the pitch is subtly going sharper or flatter. So this kind of mimics that analog style detuning effect. All right, next we have this quantization menu specifically for when we're modulating the pitch. Now we haven't got into any of the modulation stuff yet, but let's quickly set up a basic modulation just so I can demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to assign this LFO one to the chorus tuning here. We can just set it to maybe, uh, let's set it to 0.15. All right, so now when I play a note, you can hear the pitch change. All right, uh, now if I click on Q here, you notice that that pitch modulation is sounding a bit stepped. In fact, let me slow this LFO down so we can hear that a bit better. Oops, that was the wrong LFO. We're working with LFO one here. Now I can click on this pencil icon and choose what notes we're using here for quantizing the pitch. So this looks like a chromatic scale, but I can turn off individual notes. And now we have like a major scale with all the white keys. That's pretty cool. We can even further remove notes, add notes, and customize the scale that is going to be used when the pitch is being modulated. So a very handy feature here. All right, let's turn this off. I'll also disable that modulation. I'm going to tone down the drift here so we don't have too much pitch change as I'm repeating the same note. Okay, next, let's check out the oscillator section. So this whole design is very similar to the mini Moog. Three oscillators. Each have different wave shapes. We're listening to the sawtooth here. I can switch out to the sine. Triangle. We have width control for the triangle. Gonna make it a bit buzzier, a little bit more like a sawtooth. The ramp down sawtooth versus the ramp up sawtooth sounds identical. In a second, it'll make sense why we have these two options. Then there's the pulse shape. Right now it's its square. I can adjust the pulse width. We get all these tonal variations. Overall volume control. Coarse tuning. Now this is just for this oscillator. This is for all three together. So I can set this to plus 12. Bring in oscillator 2 here by increasing the volume. Set it to a different shape. And now we can hear the octave difference between these two tones. There's also fine tune. Let's bring in the third oscillator. Adjust the fine tune. So you get that nice interaction between the three oscillators, especially when there's subtle tuning differences like that. 
All right, next is this output section. This is fairly simple. We have an overall volume control here. We can decide if this entire signal is gonna to go to filter one or to filter two or to both when it's in the center. Next, we have a noise generator. So you can mix that in. You can hear that in the background a little bit. Right now it's set to white noise. We also have this red noise, which is kind of like a low pass filtered noise or a high pass filtered noise when it's set to blue. If I bring the volume down of all the main oscillators, we should be able to hear just the noise cleanly. So that's blue and that's red. All right, let's go back to bringing up the level on these oscillators. Now we have key tracking on these two oscillators. So if I turn off key tracking, You can hear that oscillator one is key tracked, but oscillator two is not. So it gets stuck at that root note and we get this interesting droning effect. But I'll turn that back on. Oscillator three also has the exact same feature. Now oscillator one and oscillator two have this FM option. So basically we can use oscillator three to modulate the pitch of oscillator one or oscillator two. Let's just hear modulating oscillator one. So I'll turn off FM here and keep this FM on. So the frequency of oscillator one is going to be modulated by oscillator three. And here we can set the amount. Let's bring the volume of this oscillator down so we can just listen to the oscillator that is being modulated. So this is essentially audio rate modulation, but I can bring the coarse tuning down and kind of get into that LFO mode. I guess I could turn off key tracking and get it even lower. But there's no true LFO mode like the Mini Moog. All right, now instead of using oscillator three as a modulation source, we could also just use a noise generator. And that creates like really aggressive sounds. You can also tone down the amount to have it a bit under control set in the middle so you get a mix of both. Now when you're using an oscillator as a modulator, it makes sense to have a ramp down or a ramp up shape because that will definitely change the resulting tonality. So imagine pitch jumping up and then coming down gradually as opposed to pitch starting at a lower value and then going up and then jumping back down. All right, now lastly, let's talk about Unison. Almost every modern software synthesizer has this feature where we can stack additional voices. So right now I'm playing one note and we're just hearing this one oscillator, but I can increase the number of voices here, let's say to five, and I can detune those voices. So this is where you get this really rich thickening effect because all those voices are slightly out of tune from each other. We also have this stereo widening. So when this is all the way down, all those five voices are pretty much centered. So you get a very mono effect. When I increase this stereo width, we get this really nice stereo widening effect where all the different voices are panned across the stereo image. The different modes which you can play with is classic, chord and super, like a super saw effect. switch to a saw mode. All right, so that is the analog engine in pigments. In the next tutorial, we will check out the wavetable engine.